guys what's going on for me it's saturday and i'm glad it is this week i've had a couple of uh, governmental agency meetings that were pretty interesting um high point of the week was really uh the department i work for in the city did a uh, team building exercise um, in the interest of collaboration getting everybody to work together because we have to produce high-end results where i work and they took us to escape room la um, you go in this place and you try to escape by clues and they're obtuse clues and all kinds of things. It's uh, anyway, let me put it this way. If you're somebody that builds cigar box guitars by the seat of your pants and kind of, kind of figures things out as you go, you're going to love this place. So you, if you have an escape room somewhere around you, get some of your friends together and check it out. So shout out to escape room LA while I'm giving shout outs, uh, Music in the background today is Jack Broadbent. Jack Broadbent, check that out. Good with a slide. And then finally, my shout out, my big shout out goes to RT Valine of RT and the 44s, wrong caliber, RT and the 44s. He sent me this license plate. There's a lot of Oklahoma stuff coming out of my shop right now. And we're going to be doing something really exciting for a folk festival this summer. So, RT, thanks a lot. And thanks for the t shirt for Tammy. All right, let's get out of the way now. End of the video is my email address. Subscribe button's that round one in the middle. Hit that. Uh, hit notifications. You'll get a bell. As soon as I release some, it's usually on Thursdays and Fridays. You'll get a notification that there's something new and exciting coming out of my shop or maybe not so much. And my playlists are there. I'm trying to arrange my playlists uh, where it's about necks, it's about bodies, it's about the whole guitar sound, that type of thing. So check those out. Anyway, what we're working on today, trying to handle anything, we're still on this Oklahoma license plate, a guitar, and we finished the neck and headstock. Remember this with the route 66 and so now it's time for this piece right here the nut i'm going to put a bone nut on this one and i'm going to show you how to work with bone to make a nut i've done uh, another episode about just specifically nuts in general and gave you a lot of information there and i will give you a link to that that eye popping up right there don't forget about that eye because it sends you to other videos of interest anyway let's get to the bench and i'm going to show you how to make a nut out of bone. Let's go. Okay guys, I've set the camera right over the top of this. You'll remember that when we um, did the headstock, we brought the map down here, the graphic, and left this open. You can see that this area starts to slope down. I mean, the camera sl slopes down really fast right here, but this is flat, and that is where we want to put our nut. So, the first thing I want to tell you is this really needs to be nice and flat, both along, I swear, this is like driving backwards in a mirror, right here and right here, Let's try that again, right here and right here, it needs to be nice and flat, because if your nut doesn't sit flat, what happens is, if it starts to tilt back like this, your strings are going to be loose, if it starts to come forward like this, you're going to have all kinds of intonation problems and it's just not going to be right. So the best thing to do is to start and make sure that this is nice and flat in this area right here. Both sides up against the end of the fingerboard and at the base of the headstock. Now before I go ahead, I kind of wanted to remind you, there's actually two ways I do necks. Uh, or nuts at the at the top of the fretboard. One of them is to use the bone uh, nut right up to the end of the fretboard. And then there's this method in which I use a bolt with these lighting fixture uh, nuts on here that I can tighten up or do whatever. And then I'll space my strings along here and file the groove in here. But this is put together by cutting a narrow slot in your fingerboard. And you want to remember that if this, wherever this is on the fingerboard, this knot, that's where your measurement starts for your scale. Remember our scale? Yardstick? Yeah. So that's really the only thing you have to worry about. So this is, is as simple as cutting 
a thin notch in the top of your fingerboard. Now, I've got another one here that you've seen before. This is going to a raffle soon, where this knot is at the top of the fingerboard, and that's what we're gonna work on today. So first, let's talk about material, the bone, okay? I get these bone blanks, get them in packs of about 10, and they come in different sizes. This is, for those of you that hate the metric system, here it is, 50 millimeters, in length, 13 millimeters in height, and six millimeters wide. And so that's a little bit bigger than what we're gonna need to do this knot here. In fact, there's about that much too much. So let's mark that off, you see that? I really don't need this. Ideally, if you can find this size, great, there's no waste, but if you can't, it's always better to have a little too much that you cut off than not enough. So again, I put that up to the edge and made a mark right there. Now when I cut this, I'm gonna cut right to the outside of that mark. I don't wanna to cut to the inside of the mark and end up with something being uh, too short looking like that. So um, I've got that marked again to the end of the fingerboard. There's my mark right there. Now I've told you all about this small uh, square that I've got, I really like it. Um, it's a lot easier to handle on this small stuff like this. So I'm gonna put my pencil on the mark. I'm gonna come up to here. I can see my mark is right there. So I'm gonna go all the way around. And the reason I go all the way around is when you're filing and grinding you can tell if your stuff is level because when you flip it over the mark is either uniformly gone here so if I got if I've got a, a mark here but none of it here that means it's tilted one way or the other and I go all the way around and do that now in addition to cutting it here to make sure it's okay here I also need to make sure that this nut isn't super high right here. So let me scoot this forward. I'm going to take a pencil that's got a sharp edge and I'm just going to lay it on the frets. You need to have everything fretted already. And I'm going to draw a line like this. Now some people flatten out the pencil a little bit to get it down, but I'm going to put that pencil right there and make me a mark. So I'm going to cut this off and then I'm gonna grind this down to make this mark disappear. Now I'm gonna be using a scroll saw to cut this and a belt sander to not only pull this down uh, to that level, uh, but also to round this off. So I've got a couple little tricks. This is a quick way to lose your fingernails on a belt sander or the tip of your finger on a scroll saw. So let me show you a couple tricks when I cut this. Now guys, I've used my scroll saw in a couple other episodes and I've always reminded you, you have to set the guide right so your material isn't flip-flopping around like this. And also, anytime that you uh, adjust the blade or the tension or anything, you always want to make sure it's unplugged. And then finally, I've got a foot feed that makes this work like a sewing machine. As soon as I pull my uh, foot off the pedal, it stops. But now, I've got this guide set where it's up a little bit. I'm gonna drop it down just a tad. Again, I don't want it dragging, but see, I've got a problem here already. If I wanna keep this straight, I'm gonna end up having to put my finger here or it, it's gonna be virtually impossible to number one cut straight or to do it safely. So check this out. If you take a side off of a scrap cigar box and put it right here like this, you are going to be able as long as everything's straight, to guide this through and make your cut real nice. So I just start the blade. And move into the work real easy. I can keep the, the, the piece of bone stabilized over here with this hand and keep everything outside of the guides. And that's what you really want to do. And there we go. 
I still have all my fingers. Cuts nice. Now I'm going to show you a little, uh, there's a little bit, but I can still see my line there. See, so there's a little bit to grind off there. Once that line disappears on all sides, I'm good to go. See over here, the line's already gone. I got a little bit to uh, sand off there and a little bit there and everything will be nice and square. Now this uh, knot right here represents where I need to be. You'll see that this side, I don't know if you can see, this is beveled where this side is straight. And it's barely big enough for me to put my fingers on and especially as I'm rounding things off now I can use a file uh, like this or and it's going to take a long time but if I use a belt sander it's going to save me a lot of time but unfortunately you slip on a belt sander it will pull your fingernails over backwards you'll have a problem so rather than expose myself to that remember I've got a little bit of grinding to do sanding and filing to do on the end to make that flush can you see it we're just a tad right there just a little bit can you see that right there so what I am going to do is I am going to grind this down on a belt sander and so I'm going to take a vice grips that I've got set and I am going to put that mark down there's a reason for that you'll see in a minute and I'm going to come down here and snap the vice grips down towards the base. Now, I certainly don't want to go way up here, but I want to be, and I certainly don't want to be right at the edge where it flips off and does it does this, but I want to be about right there. Now I want to make sure it's nice and straight. I don't want this moving around. Now I'm going to go to the belt sander and I can push, turn, round and do whatever I want and my fingers are not going to get tore up and I'll be able to control the work so it turns out nice. Let's hit the belt sander. Okay let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fire up the belt sander. I don't think you like listening to belt sanders. Um, I certainly don't. I have to but I'm just going to take this and hold it like this and then I'm going to grind this straight down like this until that line disappears and then once that line disappears, I'm going to pull down to the bottom of the sanding belt and I'll move the camera for that. And then I'll just work this like this. It's more important that I'm down at the bottom where the belt wraps around the curve when I'm doing this. But I like to be up here in the middle where everything's nice and flat while I'm doing this. So let me turn the sound down and watch me grind this down. My line is gone everywhere and all the sides are nice and flat and square but now I don't want both of my edges on the, on the knot at the end of the fingerboard to be square like this that actually gives me this much area um, and that's going to be a problem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom part of the vice grips you can see that there's a top that curves down this way and this way is a little bit narrower I'm going to pop this open and move that down a little bit to make sure it's still square like so. And then I'm going to turn on the belt sander. I'm going to use this area. See where it curves down right here? I can use this and roll this back and forth like this and round that edge off nice. I want to keep this one square. So again, let me turn down the sound and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, just like that, nice and rounded over. Now, I want you to see, see how that's shiny? Do you see a few sparks flying off there? Well, those sparks could have been replaced by my fingernails being flung backwards or scraped off or something like that. So this is a good way to do this. Now, the last thing I want to tell you I forgot is you see all this dust, this white dust? You don't want to be breathing that. You don't need for everything I ever heard of, you don't need white powder going in your nose. So make sure you wear respiration and don't be breathing bone dust for sure. 
Okay, we're back at the bench now. Um, before I pull this out of my vice grips, I'm just going to take some fine sandpaper and do a little bit of this here. And now we need to make sure that everything is nice and flat and square because we're going to start partying with super glue and you really have to work fast with this. So, first thing you're going to do is get a couple clamps because when we put this right here, we're going to want to make sure the curved side is towards the tuners. Let's pop this out of here. Everything sits nice and flat. We're going to want to clamp it right here. So this holds up against here. And we're going to clamp it down this way. So you want to make sure that you're ready with your clamps because this glue sets up fast. I want to give Gorilla uh, Glue, Super Glue, a shout out. They give you quite a bit of it in the container. So it's not like you're dealing with a little tube that's hard to deal with. It reseals up. And the method that they've got for putting it down is also pretty good. It doesn't come blasting out of there. So I like this stuff. And I do like that Jack Broadbent going on in the background. Now my clamp that holds this, we're not clamping down at first. We're going to put a clamp here that holds this up against there to keep it tight. It's going to be sitting on my headstock. So I'm going to put a little bit of this tape right here. This painter's tape, of course, this is all dry. Put a little bit of painter's tape there so the clamp doesn't mar this area. So now it's party time. I am going to make a mark right there, a very thin mark. That way I know where my glue has to be right there. Do you see that? I don't want it all over up here. So my glue is going to go on the bottom and on that mark right here. So I'm going to take this Gorilla Glue let a drop come out like this and now it's time to go to work because I have to put this right here push that against there we'll make sure I got the appropriate sized clamp right here now I'm going to turn this down and we're going to hold that Oh, look at that. Everything's perfect. Nothing like having the appropriate quantity of clamps in the right sizes. I'm going to make sure that that's lined up. And I'm going to put this clamp right here to hold it down. And we're just going to leave that sit. How do you like that clamp? <laughs> okay, I've got a couple of these going on. So, um... That's what I'm up to now. I'm not going to have you watch glue dry, uh, but I will tell you that once this is done, I'll pull a clamp off. I've got a nice set of files, different type files. You want to remember that if you use a rounded file and you're trying to get a big string to fit down in the groove of either a nut or a bridge, you're going to get some string buzz. So um, what I end up doing is once I, this would be the, rounded off part towards the tuners here. Once I get everything strung up and this guitar is right, I'll um, lay the strings on there and then space them how many millimeters I want. Say I want four across from the edge. Um, you want to remember that I've got uh, that episode called um, Knots, so watch that. But once this is strung up here, I'll just take this file, I'll make my marks where my string goes, strings go and then cut the notch in and wrap it up so it's all pretty easy to work with bone i mean you can really make one of these and glue it down in probably 10 minutes all right there it is that wasn't so hard after all um i'm glad you could join me on this we're going to continue on this and ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to see this whole guitar with some bits and pieces of some stuff that we've been doing over the last week or so come together in an episode called the Oklahoma themed guitar. So thanks for sticking with me. Don't forget to give me a like below and a subscribe and check the notification box and I will see you very soon.